Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part one in what will be a short series of videos covering the build of the right console for the Simpit project. In this video we're going to just take some time to look at an overview of that upcoming build and the approach to a number of the panels and some of the thoughts and preparation in advance of that. Let's buckle up. Just to recap and, and summarise what the project is here for anyone that may not have seen this YouTube channel, I'm building a sim pit, which is a, a replication of a cockpit environment. In this case, it's the A10C Warthog, and that's interfaced into Digital Combat Simulator DCS as the, the software, the sim. What we can see now is, and what was the first key part of the build, that was a whole left console. And then that moved on to a bigger phase of the project that was the front dash. And that part ran for a good couple of years to construct this. To this point, the interface of the physical sim pit to the simulator has been a mix of keyboard encoder and DCS BIOS. And all of these instruments run on a mix of those. The keyboard encoder has been used primarily for inputs into the sim, such as push buttons and toggles, and DCS BIOS has been used for the output of displays, gauges, and things of that nature. The next phase of the project I'm entering now is to build the right console, which will go in this gap here. And that's what this short series of videos will document. What we can see on the left is a zoomed out view of the whole of the right console. And on the right of that, we'll just bring up a zoomed in view, which will pan down to take a close up look at an overview of all the panels that will be built. The right console will be made up of 12 main functional panels and then a couple of placeholders. Although as was mentioned previously that the other console and front dash were a mix of keyboard encoder and DCS BIOS, for simplicity I'll just use DCS BIOS fully for this console. Within the sole use of DCS BIOS for this, there will be a split within that of IRQ serial for some panels, but a larger proportion over an RS-485 network. For anyone that's been watching back from when I built the left console, they'll probably remember that after I built all the panels, I then had the task of building an extension like an overhang on either side of the panel so they had the width needed to drop onto the mounting rails. Well, this time round, they'll just be built of a greater width straight from the get-go. So down the line, when the console's built, they should just drop into place. What I'll do now is just briefly take each panel at a time and just talk through the thoughts and the overview of, of the approach to that particular panel. So the first is the Countermeasure Signal Processor Panel, CMSP. So at the very outset of the project, I went through a research phase where before building the left console, I actually built a few individual panels from the right console. And this, the, this countermeasures panel was one of the first ones I ever built as a prototype. So we can now see a picture of that panel. And that really is my starting point for the rebuild of it. Uh, and thinking through the parts of it that I've always wanted or intended to be better. One thing that was always on my mind was the display that whilst that and the panel is fully functional, it's a 16 by two character display. So it cannot fit all of the characters on and some of the lettering had to be um, missed off like the end of chaff or flare. So what I want to use now is a 20 by two display, but a vacuum filled display. I used one of those in the CMSC previously in the front dash and really like it. So definitely plan to use that here. And we can see on screen some early tests where it's looking good. For the CMSC, the vacuum filled display for that was run over IRQ serial. So I have also been running some tests to check that this type of component will run 
nicely over an RS-485 network. As regards the remainder of the panel, the push buttons are planned to, rather than just have like a blank tactile cap that we can see there, I plan to have, uh, similar to when I did the upfront controller, um, tactile switches sold onto a PCB that I'll have designed, uh, which uh, have a cap that's uh, acrylic CNC engraved. The revised panel will have full-size toggles rather than the miniature ones we can see now. And the knob, rather than using a generic style one, for this particular panel, there's one I plan to take from a Tornado panel, which will be in keeping with the diagram that we see. The next panel is the canopy panel, and this is very straightforward in, in many ways. The key part of this is the jettison handle, and I had a few ideas in mind of how I would approach that. In the sim, there's a button in the middle of the canopy jettison lever that when pressed in allows you to pull the lever forward. Now we're looking at various components online, one that Think would work well in this case it's an automotive part and that's a two-stage pull lever that would be, be used for headlights or something of that nature and i've sourced a couple and in initial tests and we can see it on screen now it has a good feel to the actuation of it and the one stage would prime it and the second stage would release the canopy i also like the idea of a, a small red led as a visual cue so it'll illuminate when it's primed Next up is the caution light panel, and this is one I also built as an early prototype. We can see that on screen now with a couple of the warning lights illuminated, but if we look at a different view of it, you can see a deficiency where, because I'd use one bulb per indicator window, for some of where the larger text is, it, would, it didn't manage to illuminate the whole of the window, so all of the lettering wasn't as clear as I would have liked. So I'm going to rebuild this panel and it will be this time mounted on a PCB as opposed to previously I just drilled holes in wood and the, the legs of the LEDs drop through and then I, I sort of wire them into a matrix. This time it will be straight onto a PCB but there will be two LEDs per window. I've also been playing with the idea of using some kind of a smart LED or NeoPixel where I could have um, different lighting effects on the warning panel. So where is any warnings now will flash in green and then should you click the master caution button so they're acknowledged warnings um, or they're perhaps not addressed, they go a solid green. I like the idea that perhaps any warning would flash red and then if there's an acknowledgement of it, it's a solid yellow. Um, but like I say, this is something that I'll do a bit of research and play around with some near pixels and it ideally would be something I could integrate into um, this reworked caution light panel or if not perhaps that might be something down the line as an upgrade. The electric panel is a fairly straightforward one and it is one I made an early prototype of. At that stage of prototyping I was testing different kinds of acrylic and this was a frosted acrylic and one of the downsides of that is that when the panels enclosed and you don't want the text illuminated so, you know, daytime flight conditions, the text just fades away, which would be fine if it was for um, some kind of enunciator panel. But for normal standard panels, you want clear lettering, whether illuminated or not. So it would just be a question of machining a new fascia, and then I'll strip this prototype down for reuse of all the toggles. The CDU will be a really cool panel to build that's quite a key one in my mind for the simpit and not one I've built a prototype of before. There'll be two main parts to it the first will be the display and the second will be all of the push buttons the keypad. I've been testing a few different displays and alongside that as we can see on screen just developing the CAD CAM file and things such as the alignment to the LSK buttons. In terms of the push buttons which make up the keypad, I'll take the same approach that I took to the UFC that we can see on screen now. I might well approach this from a matrix design point of view for that keypad, or just for simplicity I might simply just wire it straight into an Arduino Mega, um, but we'll see based on some tests. And also to see 
the load that puts on the RS485 network because if there's enough of a volume of inputs I have noticed on the network that can cause some slowdown so this potentially could be one for IRQ serial. For the oxygen regulator there's a couple of approaches I could take. The one would be to use a real panel and you can see on screen now one that I'd picked up quite some time ago on eBay and I think the first uh, part of this will be to explore um, the possibility of converting that and using it. But that said, it might well be that the most straightforward approach would just be to, to just build one in the same manner as all the others. So with that one, a little bit of testing, I think, just to, to judge which will be the best of those two approaches. The next panel is the Auxiliary Avionics panel, AAP. And for that one, the, it's a straightforward panel, ultimately, a couple of toggles uh, and a few uh, rotary switches. But the, the key thing here that I want is to integrate some toggles that are in keeping with what we see in the real aircraft, so some proper locking toggles. We can see a, a panel I got here previously, which is from a tornado, which I plan to strip down. And the two toggles we see here is what we'll be using the AAP. And the knob to the right of it is what I referred to originally when talking about the counters measure panel. I'll clean that up and utilize it on that panel. The environment panel is a larger panel. It's, I would say, one of the more straightforward ones to build because it is just mostly made up of toggle switches, um, a couple of uh, knobs which will be mounted onto potentiometers, and there is uh, two small gauges as part of it. Although I have a couple of real knobs from Tornado panels, which I've used um, throughout the cockpit where I can, a lot of the ones, particularly on the left console, were general purpose knobs. Um, and to have it in keeping initially, for this panel and the lighting panel, they'll probably be standard generic knobs as well. And then down the line in the future, there'll probably be a separate exercise where I'll 3D print a whole range of them and then I'll work my way around the simpit and bring them all in line so they've all got that proper military look. While well, speaking of uh, real parts from Tornado panels, I'd actually a long time ago picked up an environment panel from a tornado and we can see here an item from that which pretty much matches exactly the gauge in the center of the environment panel for the A10. So much like the oxygen regulator I may well repurpose reuse this original part or if not I'll use my standard design approach. The TACAN panel is one that I'm really looking forward to adding to the sim pit in many ways a straightforward panel. What makes this a little bit different to some of the others in terms of the display is, because I like the, rather than OLEDs, uh, I do like the look of some of the seven segment displays. And when I built the HSI, um, I used the white seven segments for that. And I think it looked, gave it a really good look. So for this, I've sourced, and we can see it on screen now, uh, it's an Adafruit backpack of a white alphanumeric display. I'll also bring up some tests that I've been running on that and I have to say I really like really like the look of this one so really excited to use this component and get this panel built and in place. The ILS panel is one that again I made a prototype of that that we can see on screen now. Rather than build this panel fresh I'll reuse a fascia and all of the components except for the seven segment display which I'll replace with one with white digits. One improvement I'll make this time round will be when the new display is in place, I'll 3D print a little piece of edging so you don't get that bleed through of light around the side. And then finally, I'll 3D print some extensions to the left and right so the width is greater so it can drop straight onto the mounting rails. We're now getting towards the end of the panels. Uh, this is one of the final ones I'll build will be the lighting panel. On the face of it, this panel looks quite straightforward. It utilizes at a glance two types of components, toggle switches and some potentiometers. But there's a few things that add a new dimension to this. One of those is the anti-collision toggle. Now for that, and this is really cool, 
On screen there you can see I previously uh, managed to source a new old stock of a magnetically held switch and it's in absolutely perfect condition. So that's one of the added dimensions to this panel and I know when I use one of these for the anti-skid switch in the front dash um, and also there's this type of um, magnetically held, it was a solenoid in the landing gear lever, it really adds quite a dimension to the sim pit having that. The second dimension to this is each of those lighting knobs won't just be controlling what's happening in the simulator but it will physically control the dimming of all of the panels in the sim pit. And I've been running various tests to work out the best way to implement this. In the one test on screen now we can see where I'm, I'm looking at a number of dimmer units and judging what amount of current they can effectively deal with and perhaps what type and number of them to cluster together to be able to control the dimming of all of the panels. And then the second test we can see on screen which is how also could that one potentiometer also feed into the sim at the same time. But in early tests the results are very positive. So I'm really looking forward to having full control over all of the Simpit's backlighting and for such a long time everything I've built it was as simple as the backlighting was either on or off and when it was on it was full brightness and if anything it was a little bit too bright whereas now I'll have that full control and it'll all be in keeping with what's happening in the simulator. The final panel and this is separate to any placeholders that I'll make uh, is the Haas panel and this one's very straightforward it's literally just a couple of toggle switches a potentiometer and probably some kind of a servo so there won't really be a vast amount to this one. I did mention there'd be a few placeholders and this will be one of them it will be a non-functional replica of uh, the recorder unit and by the fact it's non-functional there won't really be a lot to build in this one. So that's a brief overview of the approach I'm taking to building all of the panels for the right console. In the next video I'll be looking to share the progress of these as I start to construct them. Thanks for watching.